Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Briggs. So tell me, what's the buzz at the office? Well, I'll know a lot more later on when I get a chance to speak to the others, but, you know, I, uh, I've worked with them for years, so I kind of read them pretty well. And? Well, from what I saw on the yacht last night, I'd say they're ready to jump ship. <laughs> You got to do me a favor. What? Let me uh, have arranged to be on vacation when Todd finds out that his entire staff is going to be gone. <laughs> I tell you what, I should arrange to be on vacation when Todd finds out. So tell you what. Okay. Let me know when you've sounded everyone out. Oh, okay? listen, Blair. Yes. I haven't told you. Thank you very much. Briggs, anything for you. <laughs> Bye. You're smiling. And ask me why? Oh, no, let me guess. Briggs is still into it. Oh, yes. He is on board, all hands, feet, and heart. Yeah, well, Golden Max. Planned or something right along as planned. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, it's all over, but for the shouting. Todd's shouting. Got right here. I saw the door to your room was open. So you thought I'd left? No. Just wondered what you were doing up so early. Right? Remember when you said you wanted to build a fortress around Star to protect her from all comers? Yeah, all, all comers named Blair. Well, I've spent most of the night doing the same for the sun. Here. All you have to do is refer to those notes during your uh, counterproposal to your staff at the meeting this morning. I guarantee you not one employee will quit. Well, the pitch could be dynamite. I don't think the serfs are going to go for that outfit, though. Well, what do you mean? I mean, I think you better go upstairs, get yourself, you know, all done up. Are you saying you want me at the meeting? No, I want you to stand there with your ear next to the window and listen, because I'm going to be yelling. Yeah, you're going to the meeting. Now, get out of that thing, whatever it is, and go put on a power suit. Now! You'd better bone up on your people skills. Now. Because if you speak to your serfs the way you speak to me, remember, I've been up all night. No bonus package, no matter how fat, will convince them to stay. And if there's a mass exit, you can kiss your newspaper bye-bye. Hey, I'm sorry I'm late. I know that's bad, but I ran into Kelly, and she was kind of in some bad shape some family problems. Yeah, well, so am I. So let's just skip this, OK? Oh, boy. I can't believe that she did all this and I didn't show up. I feel like such a jerk. Never mind. Look, I didn't realize you knew it was my birthday. I, I thought you just wanted me to come over and hang a poster for you. I didn't think that it mattered if I guess I didn't think, period. Coming! Good morning. No, it isn't. Did you drop by so that I could humiliate myself again? No, actually, I just came by to let you know your dad's OK. Now you do. See you. Wait. Come in. You see my dad? Yeah. Yeah, last night. Where? Don't you remember? Well, he was, uh, in my mom's bed. 
she didn't want him to be alone after she bailed him out of jail. He was in jail? Yep. He hit a lot of places last night, including a dumpster. What? <laughs> that was after he stole the egg truck. Why did he steal an egg truck? He didn't have one of his own. Oh, I get it. This is another routine. A stand-up riff? Well, no, it has a funny side, but it's no joke, Dora. I mean, Mel got roaring drunk and commandeered an egg truck. Cops arrested him and took him to a holding cell until my mom got a call and bailed him out. So how much trouble is he in now? Geotauruses. Yeah, it's uh, Yiddish for trouble. Trouble the. As in big, many, multitudinal, like what you have this morning. Physical. Legal. Emotional. Well, the first and the third I can help you with. Although I do have some aspen around here somewhere if you get desperate. And frankly, I don't even think I'll be able to grant you any relief for the legal end of this thing either. Well, it's that serious? Are you kidding? Auto theft, reckless endangerment, creating a public nuisance, driving while impaired, driving without a license. Wait a minute, I had my license. I'll fight that one to the death. Mm. I screwed up. You've screwed up royally, Mel. Each of these charges comes with jail time. And frankly, you don't even have a defense. Roaring drunk doesn't absolve one of much these days, does it? It never should have. Basically, we've got one option. Follow my sword. Well, that's close. Throw yourself on the mercy of the court and hope that there is some. What are the odds? Well, I'd like to say they're better than you taking another drink, but I don't think I can say that. <sighs> if we're lucky, Hank will prosecute this himself. He's got great admiration for you. That can only help. Mm. So the plan is to take shameless advantage of the kindness of our acquaintances. Yeah. Basically, that's it. Yeah, well, why not? That's my standard operating procedure anyway. One life to live. Brought to see tonight. My old man used to say, you're either climbing the mountain or you're digging a hole. And I'm looking up at you from a real doozy this time. I'm sorry. I wish I could say the same, but I don't know if my words mean much anymore. I'm the one who said I was through drinking. Oh, for God's sake, Mel, you slept. Lost control, call it whatever you want to do it. I, it's, it's probably very explainable, knowing that Dorian's involved. I represented her, don't forget. It's not an experience I'd ask to repeat. Yeah, but my God. My timing. Could it have been any worse? I mean, there's Dorian poised on the lip of emotional chaos, thanks to yours truly, who badgered her until all her defenses were gone. And I choose that time to dive into the sauce. Duran's in rough shape? She's almost paralyzed with dread, Nora. She's confused. She's bewildered. And she won't let me help her move forward. She won't move forward herself. And I'm, I'm frustrated. And I'm guilty. And I can barely sleep. But I can drink. I sure proved that last night. Boy, that's such a mature response, Mel. You know what? Sometimes the best way to help someone is just to wish them well. And promise to be there on the other side when they make it through. This too shall pass. You have precedence to back this up, Counselor? Oh, I know Dorian. 
And as galling and intractable as she can be, I have to hand it to her. She's a 24-carat survivor. I don't think they've built the challenge that she can't measure up to. Well, when it comes to Dorian, I'm far blungeant. <laughs> you know far blungeant. Oh, lost in the woods. It's German. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm leaving now. Thank you. I'll uh, see you in court. Yeah, call yourself a cab. Room. Georgie? Georgie, are you there? Georgie? I've had it. I'm fed up. I won't do this one more day. I honestly couldn't say what Mel's looking at as far as jail time or anything. Would they really lock him up? Well, he did steal a truck. And he drove a drunk. You know, I guarantee you, though, he's going to get a fair shake. He couldn't ask for a better, more open-minded DA than Hank Gannon. Well, an open mind is mandatory when it comes to dealing with my father. Listen, about you feeling humiliated last night, I... Yeah, I know. I did a great job. Thank you. You didn't come off like you think you did, Dorothy. And I don't mean to steal your thunder, but... If anyone ought to feel like a jerk around here, it's me. Why is that? Because I never for one second realized how you felt about me. Why do I not find that soothing? <sighs> Dorothy, you're the one who said you wanted to just be friends. And you made that clear right off the bat, that that's the way things had to be. And you accepted it. Well, didn't I? I mean, we had burgers and, and went out for, you know, movies, and, and we piled around like best buds. I had a great time. Right. Well, you didn't seem like you were suffering. Surprise. Yeah, I was surprised. But that's okay. I just wish that you would have let me know sooner. Well, it was kind of tough to schedule that moment of enlightenment with you obsessing about Kelly every minute we were together. <sighs> okay, now listen. Who kept pushing me to deal with my feelings about Kelly, huh? You. And I really honestly thought that you, you wanted to help me out and, and, and see me through all this junk as a friend. I did. But you said that's all you were interested in. I know, I said it, I just didn't mean it. Which makes me an even bigger jerk than you are. Mr. Manning, ready for the meeting? Yeah, get in here. Farrah, Ramos, Needleman, come on. Uh, excuse me, uh, will Mrs. Manning be staying? Yes, as a matter of fact, she will. Yeah, but this is gonna be a little different than our usual meetings, Briggs. I want you to call the department heads, all the area supervisors, all the shop stewards. Get them up here. Right now? No, faster than that. See, I just got wind of a late-breaking story. A big one, and I want the whole gang here so that they can hear how I'm gonna handle the situation. Okay, here's the deal. Any of you try and stab me in the back, I'll hunt you down like the miserable pigs you are and tear your hearts out. Uh, what Mr. Manning's saying is he knows competitive pressures exist in any business and that employees are, on occasion, offered tempting career opportunities elsewhere, but that it would deeply disappoint him if any of you were uh, wooed away. Right, what she said. So if any of you are thinking of splitting, it's just not gonna happen. In other words, the Sun is prepared to ensure that its loyal employees are happy and well compensated. Right. You see, the thing is, I'm about to kick the banner right where it hurts, and I'm not going to let any of you screw it up, because I'm on a roll. Mr. Manning's point, of course, is that while he readily acknowledges that he's not the easiest publisher to work for, his priority is to have all of you share in the future success of The Sun. Tell them how. You all get a big raise. Uh, by how much, 12.5% plus profit sharing and an extra week of vacation. There. Did I do that right? I believe you didn't mention the daycare facility. Give me. Yeah, it says right here, daycare facility right in the building, open all hours for all employees so your loved ones will be near and dear. There, everybody happy? Mr. Manning, this is a very generous offer. You're telling me. But I think there's one question we all have. What? What is it you want from us in return? Give me a quarter. What? Give me a quarter. You got a multi-billionaire 
on a hook, and you want 25 cents from me? Yes, I do. A couple of mimosas to make a toast. Sound like you had one already. <laughs> That's right. No, what are you talking about? Look, things, I'm not saying things aren't looking good, but let's not celebrate until we got some signatures on the dotted line. Max, there's nothing that can go wrong here. This is going to happen. There's only one downside to this whole thing. Yeah, what's that? I'm not going to be there to see Todd's face when he realizes that I'm the one that made his little precious sunset. So come on. Make those mimosas. Let's for, go for a toast. Come on. No one ever say no to you. No, they don't. Look, I, look, I know any day you can put the screws to Todd goes down in your diary is a great day, but yes. let us remember that Ian is the rich, arrogant jerk that we would like to focus on here. I haven't forgotten Mr. Armitage. In fact, I was just thinking, do you think it's too over the top to um, have eight bridesmaids in my wedding party? Hmm? No, you think you can get eight girlfriends? <laughs> You're right, Max. You're right again. Might be tougher than landing the groom. You're really getting a kick out of this, aren't you? Oh, I'm loving every minute of it. Good. Well, may I steer the conversation back to what we were speaking about for just a second okay. here? There's something you and I need to work out. There is what? Well, seeing as how you practically have Todd nailed, and it looks like Ian's about to become Mr. Daimler, <laughs> what do I get out of it? Okay, I can understand why you'd be disappointed that I didn't... Have the consciousness of a coma victim. That is not fair, Dorothy. You said it yourself. You didn't have a clue I felt the way that I did. And I didn't. But now you're angry at me. And I can honestly say, I don't understand why you're so ticked off. Because you obviously don't care about me. <sighs> that is so off the mark, it's unbelievable. You know I care about you. As a friend. But that's what we are, friends. I've been straight about that from the start. That's how I behaved, as a friend. No more, no less. I've noticed. Yeah, well, so if anybody should be mad, it's me. Because you haven't been straight. I mean, during all these weeks, you've been acting like everything's fine. But it wasn't. And now you're pinning it all on me. What was I supposed to do, Joey? Just blurt out that I'm crazy about you? Yes, if it's the truth. How arrogant can you get? What do you expect me to do, Dorothy? Read your mind? Sorry, I'm just not into that. Don't patronize me. Well, then do, don't go off on me about how I can't see what you're feeling and feel the same way. Because you have no right to do that. None. You're absolutely right. But are you usually this charming with women? Only the ones who can't level with me. You want honesty? Total truth, no matter how uncomfortable it may be to deal with? Well, it beats fumbling around in the dark by a long shot. Okay. Then I'm gonna give it to you totally straight right now. I want you out of here. being so clear. I didn't think you'd take this lying down. And I was damned if I wasn't gonna come by here and at least try to apologize, even if it has to be out in the hallway. Well, it might be there or nowhere because I'm not really sure I want you inside. Well, uh, it's understandable, considering how low I managed to stoop last night. Is that the apology? It's the start of it. Finish it in here. Thank you. <laughs> Nuts. I had a speech already in my head and it just flew away. I don't like speeches. 
I know. I know I hurt you. And I'll let you down again. No more than you hurt yourself. <sighs> Just let it out, Dorothy. What? The rage, the disgust I see behind your eyes that, uh, that I heard before you yanked open that door. Just come on, let's, let's have it. Just so I can fit into your plan how this should all go? God, I really come from a family of control freaks. No, no, listen to me. You're gonna L prove it all again, Dad. You drink and then you, and then you, you run back to your aggrieved daughter and you just wallow in how horrible you feel about how horrible she feels. Just so you have an excuse to drink again. It's the perfect setup. Well, sorry, I don't feel like playing the enabling game with you again. No. This is not a game. Right. It was just a pure coincidence that after you filled yourself up with alcohol last night, you just showed up here. Acerbic and belligerent and about as provocative as one human being can be. That all just happened. You're getting too good at what you do. Years of experience. Ah, oh, well, my long speeches never worked very well anyway. From now on, why don't I just uh, try and keep you out of my darker loops? How's that? That would be really nice. In the meantime, you could uh, let me know in what general direction you pitched my car keys off the balcony last night. I'd be much obliged. I'd even leave, which uh, ought to be a real good incentive. Drive safely. You went down there in the, in the cold and scrabbled around on the ice for these? You were in no condition to. Thanks. At the risk of sounding like an absurdly sentimental dad, can I take this... Uh, small act of kindness as a sign that you might allow me to, to take you out for dinner tonight. Georgia, you can't quit on me. Please, please don't quit. We'll work it out, okay? Quit? Nora, I would never quit this job. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you said that you, you, were, you couldn't take it anymore and you were fed up. With everything but this work? Do you know why I was so incredibly late this morning? Well, you weren't really all that late. Why? For starters, I got zero sleep last night. The radiator pipes started clanging like Big Ben. Then the couple next door started fighting. Then after a few hours of that, they made up. Which was even louder. Oh, I remember making up. Then this morning, the second I soaked up in the shower, the hot water ran out. And I swear to God, the Crosstown bus does not have wheels on it. That's how slow it was going. Well, you know, if you live in such a crummy place and it's so far away, why don't you move? Oh, I wish I could. But I just can't afford any apartment by myself. I wish I could find some roommate that... somebody that wanted a roommate. Mm -hmm. Somebody great like Rachel. Well, that somebody might be Rachel. What do you mean? Well, she's living in a two-bedroom apartment by herself. I thought I heard her say that she shared the rent with Taya. Well, yeah, she and Taya originally went in on it, and Taya's been sort of... Keeping the second bedroom is sort of a safe harbor from Todd, which everyone should have. But now that her marriage seems, uh, God forbid, stable, uh, maybe she'd be willing to, to give up her share. I don't know. It's worth asking Rachel about. Absolutely. Yeah. I would love that. Well, I'd like it, too. But I was just thinking that you seem in much better spirits than you did yesterday. Oh. Marginal. Well, can't still be mad about you working with... RJ and Jakar and Rachel, can he? Yes, he can. We've agreed to disagree. And that's about it. I'm really sorry to hear that. What do I want? Uh, there's nothing sinister or even mysterious about it. Mr. Manning is simply making you a better offer than you'd receive from any other publisher. All he asks in return is your signature on a two-year binding contract. So come on, who's first? 
Come on, I got a paper to put out, and the fact is, nobody's gonna give you more money for you to do your little jobs than I am. Okay, go away. And thank you for your loyalty. My door is always open. Great meeting, huh? Yeah, it went very well. Briggs, I don't think I saw you sign a contract. Well, it, you know, it was, it was very crowded in here. Yeah, well, now it's just us, so knock yourself out. This is, uh, this is what I call personalized service. Oh, well, the pampered staff is a happy staff. You need a pen? No, 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 I got one. Do you remember how to use it? Ah, well, there we go. You see, all these grumblings about me being a lousy boss, and I managed to knock them out in one morning the next two years, anyway. Well, you, uh, <clears throat> you must be very pleased. Uh-huh. Briggs. Yes? Hmm. Yeah, you remember what I said about uh, people who try and stab you in the back? Uh, that, that would be hard to forget. Yeah, well, I wouldn't forget it. You see, if it turns out that you know more about this other offer than you're copping to, I'm going to be very unhappy. I, I, don't, I don't know what other offer you mean. Honestly, I don't. You don't play poker, do you? No. Didn't think so. I'm just warning you, that's all. You see, if it turns out that you had anything to do with me almost losing my employees, well, you'll be mopping the press room floor for the next two years. And just for kicks, I'll make you do it in heels. Have a nice day. I think that went very well. <laughs> like gangbusters. Well, I knew it would all come together. Oh, did you really? Yeah, as soon as I opened my mouth. Oh. And you say I don't have a way with people. <sighs> there you go. No. Let me hear what is on your wish list first. Well, it's not that much, really. Right. Ian's got six billion. You have absolutely nothing. You hate the man's guts. But, hey, I don't want that much, really. Come on, Max. Spell it out. What do you want? W-V-L-E. The TV station? Yeah. It's just a little thing. I mean, I owned it already once before in my life. When? A few years before you blow into town. Uh, I, I am so impressed. Mm. Max Holden, media mogul. Yeah, you got that right. Mm. So I got experience and I can take it to Ian. All right, well, I don't have any problem with that. I mean, once I land Ian and he gets the sun, I'm going to have a slew of TV stations. Mm. I do think we might have a little problem, though. What's that? I don't think Ian's going to be too keen on the idea of handing the TV station over to you, especially you. That'll be no problem because... My dear Blast, on this, our wedding day, I have a most special gift for you. Now, I've picked up on your subtle hints and your not-so-subtle hints these last few months, and so I'm giving you your very own telly station. <laughs> and I would just happen to transfer this over to you. Yeah, where there's a will, there's a way. Oh, there is definitely will, and there is definitely a way. Look, Max, if we can mastermind this little son takeover for Ian, we can mastermind anything. 
I repeat. Anything. Oh, wait. Hold that thought. Hello, Blair. Charlie Briggs. No, this can't be. What can't be? Donuts from Gershwin's. Two glazed in a Bavarian cream. How did you know? It's the bag. It, uh, Gershwin's has an unmistakable crinkle in their bags. So can I come in? Come in? Gee, you can have your own desk in here if you mm. want. No, come on, sit down. I uh, had some motions to file for Nora at the courthouse, so I, I thought I'd stop by. Armed with my favorite food group, by the way. Fried. Mm. Are you okay, Georgie? No. Well, coming between you and Nora is like the worst nightmare for me. Whoa, whoa, take it easy. All Just... I've wanted to do, all I've tried to do is make things better for you guys. Yeah, I know that. And Nora knows that, too. So what's wrong? I made a bad mistake. So what did you do, Georgie? It's what I didn't do about RJ and Jakara and Rachel. I was afraid it was a mistake for Nora to represent Indigo Blue Jay. In terms of your reaction, I mean, and I... I think I could have had some influence with her, but I didn't do anything to stop it. It wasn't your responsibility. Well, in a way it was, because... A, a big part of my job supposed to be reduction of Nora's stress, and I knew that you wouldn't like it. And I know the thing that stresses her out the most is to be at odds with you. So I should have made an effort. I'm... I'm so sorry. I appreciate the apology. However, it is totally unnecessary. But let me tell you this. I really appreciate that somebody anticipated my point of view on this subject. I wish I could make you feel better about it. I'm telling myself that when Nora handled the Blue Jay partnership negotiations, it was like... it was like a party to her. And for Rachel, too. They had a total blast. And any time that she spends on Blue Jay contracts means less time that she'll spend on litigation. Which, which reduces pressure a little, and that's a good thing, right? I can't fault your logic. But I'm, I'm still really sorry. Georgie, there's no way that any of this is your fault. Are you sure? Because I would be sick if I thought that you thought that I, I let you down in any way. Yeah, but you didn't. And I don't think that. And by the way, I really appreciate the moral support. Okay. I hated thinking that I might have contributed to any trouble between you two. <laughs> no, no, believe me, and Nora and I don't need any help at all to get into fights these days. You're really sure? I swear, okay? On a Gershwin's donut. Excuse me. You can. Sorry. No dinner. Oh, well. It's worth a shot. I'd go if I could. I just am leaving for Indianapolis after work today. Phoebe Brandon's getting married. Phoebe Brandon? That's your friend from college. She wanted to be a veterinarian. She is one now. <laughs> That's great. Give her my best. Whatever that is. I will. Can we go for calamari fried diablo when I get back? Well, it might require some prolonged negotiation. <laughs> I think we could work it out. Listen, I was furious. I was hurt. I'm, I'm disappointed. But you're my, you're my father. 
and I love you. I always will. Not to dampen the master motivator's spirits, but what went on here today was only a chapter, not the whole story, and definitely not the last chapter. You're no fun. Well, I'd rather be right. And you are right. Blair's gonna be back as soon as she's done licking her wounds. She's a lot of things, but she's not a quitter. You were a good match. But we are too. When and whatever Blair's next stunt is, we'll be ready for it. I guarantee you. Oh, that sneaky rat! That slimy pirate! I could freaking kill him with my bare hands! Just make sure you wash them afterwards. Oh, shut up! Max! How could this have happened? Well, Todd obviously found out what you were up to and launched a preemptive strike. Obviously, there's no way he could have known about that meeting on the yacht. Todd didn't see Briggs there, and he left before any of the sun staffers got there. Yeah, well, maybe one of them spilled the beans. No. They hate Todd, and they like me. Yeah, well, somebody told him. What? Briggs say what kind of deal they got offered? Yeah. Twelve and a half percent raise. Profit participation. They got a little bit more vacation time and a daycare. Daycare? Daycare. Oh, man, you think Todd popped for all this out of the goodness of his heart? There's no goodness in his heart. Exactly, which is the reason something had to happen. That's why he had to come up with all that stuff, because somebody forced his hand. We were right about that, but who and how? Hello? Blair, it's Ian. Ian? Um, we... I mean, I was just thinking about you. Um, where are you? I'm in London. Just calling to get an update on uh, Operation Sunsteel. Well, Ian, everything is just going great. Perfect, in fact. It should all be uh, done by the time you get back to town. Excellent. Blair, you truly are amazing. Talk to you soon. Can't wait. I'm truly amazing. I'm truly dead if we don't figure a way to get out of this and now. Stay tuned for scenes from the next One Life to Live. You don't need a... Everybody asks how I stay so thin. I'll tell you, when you sound like this, you better look good. Three Musketeers. With rich milk chocolate and fluffy nougat, it's big on chocolate, not on fat. Say, can I get these to go? <laughs> Tomorrow on One Life to Live. So you're now you're saying we just give up? No, no. Never sit down. What are you doing here, Claude? I got something to tell you. You and Nora both think that I am wrong about RJ, but my gut is telling me I'm right, Hank. Tonight, find out the secrets of getting the lowest airfare on 2020 Monday.